Hello everybody, it's Chris Westergaard from The Language House. It's been a while. It's been a long time since my last video. To make up for it, I've got three videos for you all covering the topic of teaching grammar, which is usually the fear and the terror of new English teachers. And part of the reason for that is that oftentimes new teachers and even experienced teachers don't have the right mindset and the right understanding of what makes a successful grammar lesson. So, three videos for you. This first video is going to be about your overall approach. How should you approach teaching a grammar lesson? And what are some things that you can do to prepare beforehand for the grammar point um, or, or the grammar lesson? The next video, video number two, is going to be about the presentation itself. So we're gonna go through a complete rundown of how to present grammar, how to elicit it, what type of materials to use, how much should you be speaking or explaining, and generally like how long all of this should last and what should the goals be for this part of the lesson. In the final video, video number three, we're going to do a demo lesson. So we'll create a lesson together and we'll go through it start to finish that you can keep. So you'll see kind of how grammar fits into an ESA or a PPP structure and how to make them as successful as possible because that's the point to be as successful as you possibly can in the classroom. If you like this content and if you like this channel, please do hit the subscribe button. It means a lot. And if you have any thoughts or if you wanna let me know something, just drop a comment below. So let's get started with video number one, your approach to grammar and how you can prep for it. But before going into the video, do check out our TEFL certification course in Prague, The Language House. It's, um, it's a great program for anyone who's interested in learning how to teach abroad with yours truly and the rest of the Language House staff. So let's start with video number one. When most non-teachers and even some experienced English teachers think of teaching a grammar point, they probably imagine themselves up in front of a group of students, in front of the board, lecturing their way through all of the different rules, functions, examples, concepts, nuances of a specific grammatical point. It's not too difficult to imagine this. I think we can all think of the teacher up in front of a class with lots of notes on the board and basically just going through everything in a lecture style mode. Maybe some of the other students are taking notes. Maybe there's a little bit of questions going back and forth, but a lot of people would imagine this kind of lecture style approach to teaching a grammar point. And if you think this way, you're, you're thinking about it wrong. And part of the reason for this is before we start thinking of what makes a successful grammar lesson, we have to, to really come to some sort of conclusion as to why we teach grammar in the first place. Do we teach grammar so that our students can come away from the lesson knowing all of the different rules and functions and structures? Or do we teach grammar because in real life our students need grammar as a tool to effectively communicate with one another? If you, pick the, if, you, if you pick the latter, you're correct. Learning all of the rules and functions in a lecture style way doesn't really do much. Our lesson should be about usage. Case in point, um, if I want my students to be able to talk about their life experiences or a character that they're playing in fictional life experiences, the grammar that I'm going to be using is present perfect. I'm teaching the grammar so that they can effectively talk about these things. If I want students to compare different types of cars or Bond characters or movies or authors or, you know, and decide who is better than this person and the best and who is more talented, the grammar that I'm teaching is going to be comparative and superlative. If I want students to talk about how their lives would be different if they won a million dollars and the things that they would buy and the things that they would change, the grammar that they need for that is the second conditional. So there's not really, it's not really useful to just teach rules and guidelines and examples and structures. It should always be about usage. And that's the main point of this first video. And as we go through the other videos, remember that teaching a successful grammar lesson is always going to be about usage in a real life situation with actual language, 
with people making decisions on what they're saying and what they're not saying, and it's less about all of the specific rules. The rules are important, but it leads up to this real life usage. All right, before you teach an effective grammar lesson, it's important to do a few fundamental things. Uh, point number one is you have to know your grammar point inside out. You really need to be comfortable with it. You need to know about the different structures of how the grammar is used. You need to know and be able to give examples in both the question and the negative form. And most importantly, it's important for you to have a deep and solid understanding of when we use it. So many times when teachers start, when teachers start teaching grammar, they really don't know what they're teaching and why we use this grammar and why we don't, and the lesson becomes a mess. Also, it's very difficult to plan a grammar lesson if you don't have a fundamental understanding of it. And if you do, if you do that work, if you do a little bit of study in advance, the whole planning process becomes easier. So grab some sort of a grammar book, do actual grammar exercises, read up on the grammar point until you really understand it. And for the most part, you should be able to do your presentation later on without too many notes because you know it already, that's the goal. Once you understand your grammar point, what you should do at this point is pull out one or two functions and only teach those. Functions meaning what the grammar is, is used for. A lot of times when new teachers start teaching grammar, they wanna teach everything about the grammar point and that is not practical because again, it's about usage. And in a lesson, you're not going to be able to use every single use for a specific tense. You wanna pick out one or two and really exploit those and have it where that is the focus of your actual lesson. If you try to teach everything, your presentation is going to become extremely confusing and extremely long and you really won't get anywhere. Once you've thought of a few functions that you'd like to teach, you need to jump to the very end of your lesson and start planning your activation. Your activation, if you're not familiar with, is the A stage in ESA or the P stage in PPP. They're all P, so that would be the production stage. And this is where you have students use the language in a situation that is authentic as possible. And it's important to jump to the end of your lesson and start thinking of that, because that is essentially your goal. You're not interested in having students just do worksheets and take a bunch of notes. We are interested in usage. So you really need to think of that end goal. How are students going to be using your grammar point? As mentioned a little bit earlier in the video, you could do something like comparative and superlatives and have people compare a variety of different family members. Or you could have students talk about their life experiences and all the places that they have been and places that they would like to go in the future based on their past experiences. Um, but the usage is important because that again is the goal. Now that I have an activation and I have an idea of where the lesson is heading, I can then look back at my grammar point and I can think and pull out the specific elements that I need to teach. So what exactly do I need to teach to help my students get to their activation? There's going to be a lot of elements in the grammar point that I don't need to bring up and I don't have to because they're not gonna be utilized later on in the lesson. Again, remember, teaching grammar is not about going over every single rule or usage. It's about making sure that the students can eventually communicate better at the end of their lesson in a real life situation. Once this is done, I can now begin to think a little bit about levels. Um, you probably should have thought about that already, but I can really begin to think, is this appropriate for the level that I'm teaching? Is it going to be too easy or too difficult? Have the students seen this grammar point before? Am I adding something onto it? A lot of times what teachers think is that they're teaching a grammar point for the first time, but most of your students probably have seen some version of the grammar point before, and that is important to think about in advance, because if I am teaching, say, the present perfect, to a group of A2 students, this might be the first time that they've seen this tense, thus it's gonna take me a little bit more time to get through it, and I'll wanna make sure that my end goal is a little bit simpler for them. If I have a group of B1 or B2 students, I can assume that they've probably seen this before, and I can add a little bit more nuance to it, some extra concepts that maybe they haven't seen before that we can use again in the activation part of the lesson. This point of the pre-work, 
I have a grammar point. I understand it really well because I did a bunch of research on it. Um, I know what my final goal is, my speaking activity, my role play, my activation, my production part, blah, 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 blah. I've thought about the level a little bit and if it will be easy for them or difficult and how can I adjust it to make it more appropriate. Now what I want to do is think about the materials that I'm going to use in my presentation. There's a variety of different ways to make this work, but it is good to add some sort of visuals or some sort of board work or some sort of color scheme. And we'll talk about this when we go over the presentation part in video number two. Lastly, I want to come up with a topic for the entire lesson. Now, you might be asking yourself, isn't the grammar the topic of the lesson? And the answer is no, it's not. The grammar, again, helps students communicate about a specific topic or about a specific situation, but the grammar point itself should never be the actual topic of the lesson. You should never lead in with your grammar point. And the reason for this is that that's kind of boring. We don't sit around talking about grammar. Why would you lead in to your students doing that? So going back to some of the examples that I gave you, if I'm doing a lesson on comparative and superlatives where students are comparing various different family members and potentially setting up different family members for a date, um, the topic of the lesson could be family or it could be dating or it could be something. You never want to have your grammar be the main focus or the main topical element of your lesson because grammar is boring. So let's go over a quick recap of the structure that we're going to be using in this video so it's all clear and there's no misconceptions. Um, we use at the Language House the ESA model, so your Engage, Study, Activate. It is very similar to the PPP, um, Present, Practice, Produce. And these two are very similar to basically any type of teaching scenario which involves with teaching something, having students practice it, and then having students use it in a real life setting. So to break it down in the ESA structure, we have our intro where we introduce our topic. Again, not our grammar point, but our topic. Lead in, we have questions where students speak about their topic. Target language, this is where we present the actual new grammar point. Study one and study two, this is practice of the grammar point, study one being in a closed setting, um, study two being in more open where there's a little bit more freedom in what the students can say and use. And then lastly, we get to our goal, the activation, which is the most important part of the lesson where students use the grammar point in a real life scenario. That's it for video number one. Check out video number two where we go over how to effectively present your grammar point. Stay tuned.